Last week I shared how we organize our pet supplies, pet food, etc. This week I wanted to share how we organize and store any documents pertaining to our pets. We keep all of their documents in our home management binder under the pets section. Each pet has their own subsection which I made using post-its then labeled them and then stuck them on the front of the page protector. Each pet has a couple page protectors that keeps all of their documents. We have our cat in the front, we've had her for the longest, followed by our two dogs. These are the printables I use, one for each pet. You go ahead and put a photo there, you can fill out all the information. As you can see, I added pictures of my pets in there, I just um, cropped them to fit the box. They're all squares and they're good to go. First one's going to have all your pet care information. This is your pet profile for if someone is caring for your pet and they don't know what they look like or you have so many that they can't keep track of them. This is really helpful to have. This tracks their vet visits, has everything on a ledger. I also have copies of their bills which is nice but I do like having everything written down. That way I can go back easily and say, okay, they had a rabies three years ago, they're due. In the front of their section, I keep their essential information for ready reference. This is helpful when we have pet sitters. It has simple information like their name, what kind of animal they are, their birthday markings, weight, and you can put your vet clinic in here if they have any medical conditions and allergies, as well as their vaccine schedule and heartworm schedule. On the back of this page, I keep their pet care. So should we go out of town and somebody is caring for them, it's nice to have a manual or information regarding how to take care of them. So I have the pet's name, our contact information will go there, our care instructions, she's pretty simple, one cup of food a day and I put where it is, it's in the white tin on top of the dryer. We don't walk her, uh, she has no allergies and she's not on any medications. I also included hiding places, so she sometimes likes to hide in our basement storage or the guest closet. And then I also added some additional notes that treats and catnip are kept in the bureau by the door, bottom drawer on the right, along with all of her other stuff. And then I would also include her vet and our emergency clinic should something happen. The next page lists our vet visits. She doesn't go very often, um, about you know, once a year, or in this case, she's not due for her rabies vax for three years, so she'll be going here soon. But I just keep her ledger as to who we saw and the reason for our visit. And then behind this sheet, I keep our invoices. That way I can check back and see what she had exactly if I ever need to look back at that. On the next page, I keep their rabies vaccinations. So this has all the information relative to her baby's vax. It also lets me know that she's not due until June of this year. On the back of this page, I would include any town registration. In our town, we don't have to register our cats, just our dogs. So our next pet profile is on one of our dogs. I have his name, what he is, his colors, his birthday, the type of fur he has, weight, his breed. And then I would also include his vet information if he had any medical conditions and allergies. I do need to update his vaccine and heartworm schedule. Behind that, I have the same type of care instructions should anybody watch him. His care is a little different. He's a dog, so he takes a cup in the morning and a cup in the afternoon for uh, supper. I also put where his treats are located, um, a walk schedule, so they take a two mile loop around the neighborhood. No allergies, no medications, and if he's hiding, which he usually isn't, he's either in the guest or the master bed. He loves sleeping and hiding in beds. Here we have our vet visit ledger. We see that we saw um, the vet actually not too long ago. He got updated on everything. He has a couple pages. I just add a new one on top every time we go through one, two, three, four, five visits. This one's a little bit of a fatter page, but this has all of our invoices and this includes, I think, one of our other dog's stuff as well. And then I'll put their names up in the top so that I know who it's for. Sometimes they put their stuff on the same page, so I'll just make photocopies and put one in each of their sections. Once again, we have their rabies vaccination records right here. This is what's on file with the town. And then their registrations with the town are kept here as well. Moving on to our last pet, she is our most recent one. I have her name, birthday, what she is, her colors, how much she weighs. Again, I'd put her vet information in if she had allergies. 
On the next page, I have her hair instructions. So again, she gets a cup in the morning, a cup at night. Her treats are on top of the bureau by the door. She takes a two mile loop around the neighborhood and she might be found in the master bedroom. I have a ledger for her as well. She's got her vet statements, her rabies certificate, which is on file with the town. And then as well as her dog license, which is on file with the town as well. And these are good. Our dog licenses in our town are good for a year. I'd love to know how you organize your pet documents. This has worked really well for us. And if we do end up getting another pet, it's easy to add. I'll just add another tab right after Phoebe.